Hello guys, now we'll do the October 16th editorial Monday. So here are uh, uh, two important uh, reminders that the 2024 and 2025, both the batches are starting now. That is October 17th, uh, tomorrow the timetable starts for 2024, which is 222 day timetable and uh, October 28th, the 575 day timetable for 2025 batch also starts. And both we have like four month installment and nine month installment. So if you had missed it, come and contact in WhatsApp soon, the number is given. Later, don't tell that uh, the batch is over, I could not join and all because we have reminded it almost every single day when we were doing editorial and in my WhatsApp status, Instagram, everywhere these posts were repeatedly done. Like I think one month back we have launched both the batches. So please don't miss this. Okay, come and contact immediately so that you don't miss out this because this already is not a new plan. Okay, already we have launched uh, as a 222 timetable and we had launched a 575 day timetable and just the installments because I am reminding you because many people think there is no installments or discounts. So I am reminding you now one more time. Okay. Now today's uh, uh, editorial, okay, today's editorial is actually uh, interesting. There are uh, good, good articles also. Like I can show you like what are the uh, important ones and what are the things which we'll uh, ignore. Okay, like first one, if you see Chhattisgarh elections, that is uh, not important for us. So that we will not discuss. November month, there is a lot of elections coming up. Olympics, uh, nothing to discuss here. Olympics, uh, we have suggested that we want to host the 2036 Okay, 2036 Olympics we want to host because uh, up to 2032 it's already decided. Okay, I think I think it's Australia who will uh, Brisbane uh, which will uh, uh, do this. Okay, and Olympics you should know they will never tell country name. It's always a city name like Rio Olympics which is in Brazil or the Tokyo Olympics which is Japan. That is the last one which happened. And now uh, 2000. Uh, uh, 28, 2032 and 2036 uh, will be like the next upcoming things and we have suggested because we want the world to come more and more to India. So we are hosting BRICS or SCO or G20 which is the biggest event where we showed our infrastructure and our uh, new parliament and many many new things which we showed because many people still have the image that in India means slums or India means only uh, Taj Mahal and the surroundings or maybe some Ayurvedic treatment. They know only few things. We want to show that we also have the best infrastructure in the world. Okay, so that is why we are doing more and more such event and we will see what will happen okay and then Israel Hamas we have discussed it multiple times but uh, instead of this I will discuss another article today which came in the non-editorial page because this is just a person's opinion about uh, Palestine and uh, Israel's ideology and all that is not important for exam so another article I'll show you that we'll discuss and today is World Food Day October 16 so food and water related many important United Nations recommendations have come that is very important we'll discuss and this uh, Nobel Prize again we have already told this lady has got Nobel Prize for studying the uh, uh, woman uh, gender gap and uh, these problems which women face in the employment and education. So uh, more interesting points have come. So we will uh, discuss that. This is Andhra local news and this is cricket world cup news. Okay, both are not important for your exam. So two articles in this page that is the food and water and the uh, Nobel prize and then we have the uh, Israel Hamas war only but here in the non editorial page like editorial is page number six and seven. Today in page number eight one law of war related meaning uh, we know that there is Geneva Convention, there is International Criminal Court, many things are there which governs the wars and things in the world. So did Israel and Palestine violate this? Okay, it's not why Palestine actually it is the Hamas terrorist group. Uh, Palestine people have not done anything wrong here. So Israel and the Hamas terrorist group, these two, they have violated certain things. So that we will uh, learn in a different angle, not the war aspect, the law angle, which will be important for your exam. Okay. So again, reminding you the 2024 batch, 2025 batch and even current affairs separate batches everything is open the more you delay the more you are risking your own exam preparation because this exam demands time okay and that to disciplined usage of time not like simply telling I will study one year that one year has to be in a disciplined fashion you have to study and that is what in our test series we cover so try to contact me and start okay at least if you are not enrolling test series watch my free foundation and begin okay you have to start now else you are out of the race okay so this is the WhatsApp number, uh, contact and uh, also channel is there, WhatsApp channel where I post all the updates. I will add you to that channel also. Okay. Now, the first article that is World Food Day. Okay. The theme will be there always United Nations when they celebrate something, there will be a theme. So that is water is life, water is food. So that is what you have to know even though it is World Food Day. Okay. We already have another wo World Water Day and all. Tell me in comment section which is the day. So World Food Day, we are telling water is life, water is food. So that shows the importance of water and also there was a quote by someone. Okay. Tell that also in comment section who told that next world war will be fought in the name of water. Okay. You have seen already countries fighting for water. The states in India, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka are fighting for water meaning very serious fight okay protests are there they are burning each other's uh, vehicles and all when they cross the border or they are uh, uh, attacking the actors who go to promote their movie meaning a Canada actor goes to Tamil Nadu or a Tamil Nadu actor goes to Canada they are attacking each other so that level of fight is happening 
so that is why water is very critical and in this time like when even including india we have a droughts flood unseasonal rain and prolonged dry spell this is a very very crucial issue so now united nations have many food agency related bodies okay one is fao one is this IFAD, International Fund for Agriculture, and then World Food Program. So all these stress on the same thing that innovation should come, collaboration between countries should come, then only you can manage, conserve, and uh, the available resources, scarce resources, you can use it properly. Okay. And also, I explained you on October 7th editorial, the uh, uh, sustainable development goals in detail, which we have to achieve by 2030. Okay. And now it's already 2023. So it takes seven years over and we are in the middle. And in midway, we have not even achieved 50% of the goal that means obviously by 2030 we will not achieve the full target so that is why it's very very crucial now water affects the human life animal life food requirement nutrition requirement everything it affects okay so data a lot of data is there in today's article which you should note down and you should use in your gs3 papers only then you will get some extra mark and that extra rank which will get you your ias or your preferred cadre okay else you will also write the similar answer which coaching class is giving and you all will get the same mark and you will not be in the rank list okay so try to write unique pointers which i will teach you today so 60 percentage of india's net zone area is rain fed okay meaning depending on the rain and that only contributes to 40 percentage of our total food production so you can imagine how much important rain uh, water is okay so rain fed agriculture depends directly on water availability and the rain and soil moisture variation can severely affect our food and nutrition security the urgent need to adapt climate change by promoting technologies and practice that make rain fed production more resilient and sustainable that is what is the urgent need okay we need a proper technology and practice which can uh, long term conserve the water and the uh, rain fed production so sustainable water management and irrigated agriculture okay accounts for 72 percentage of global fresh water okay now entering irrigation we are providing irrigation and doing the agriculture in the world 72 percentage of the global fresh water withdrawals are for this purpose and sometimes it is leaving damaging effect on the ecosystem seasonal river aquifers aquifers means our groundwater below the earth whatever is there that and all groundwater level is going down and so around the globe people are using a lot of water for agriculture itself so that is a major point you should tell in your answers that where is water going water is mainly going in agriculture okay so now decades of poor water management misuse pollution okay you know the lakes are getting polluted rivers are getting polluted climate crisis is degrading the fresh water supplies adding vulnerability to small scale producers okay because they are the ones always get affected by this uh, shocks of the world okay and land degradation is happening soil is getting bad all these are affecting our ecosystem and making it more and more fragile and 40 percentage of the plants total land area is now degraded okay leaving the farmers with less productive land and small scale farmers who are 80 percentage of the farmers globally are specially affected and they have no access to these things also finance technology irrigation so this kind of data correctly in one sentence result they have written the data the problem the solution everything they are writing in one line that way learn to write answers okay so extreme weather events and variability in water availability are severely affected the agriculture production changing the agro ecological conditions and shifted shifting growing seasons this exact line upsc will put and tell justify or evaluate or examine that time you have to write what we are learning today okay this line can be a main question itself so now government of india has assessed the impact of the climate change in 2050 and 2080 what will happen india has already done a study okay so there again good data is there which you should note down that rain uh, fed rice yield okay rice yield in india are projected to reduce by 20 percent now india is kind of the number one producer in the, in the south if you see this vietnam or southeast asia india these are all like number one producers of rice so they are telling 20 percent reduction by 2050 and 47 reduction percent reduction by 2080 the rice yield this is india's data and irrigated rice yield okay irrigated one the other one is rain fed this is irrigated irrigated is declining by 3.5 percentage by 2050 and 5 percentage by 2080 so this you have to remember okay you have to note down and then wheat wheat yield are projected to decrease by 19.3 in 2050 and 40 percent in 2080 then the carif maize yield that also will decline by 18 percentage and 23 percentage by 2050 and 2080 so these uh, three items okay the rice the wheat and the maize with the date and year uh, you have to buy hard the percentage and the year okay you have to know this and you should write and you will get extra two three marks this is my guarantee so now climate change without adequate adaption uh, measures reduces the crop yield and lowers the nutritional quality okay because we know these hunger reports are coming or nutritional reports are coming always india's rank is low okay some are manipulated reports and little biased also but still india is not like 
deserving now as of now to come in the top 10 or the top 50 as of now so we should do things okay fao already the united nations body is doing lot of projects in india okay like in andhra pradesh karnataka himachal pradesh maharashtra and all they are piloting a crop forecasting framework okay so that you can uh, know uh, make a model which will incorporate the weather soil characteristics market information everything and it will help the farmers to take decisions when to plant it when to uh, sow it reap it every, everything they will uh, have an idea if you have a proper plan so this will transform them also and also recommendations are that you should sell more high value crops you would have heard in uh, modi government also telling that uh, doubling the farmers income and then so you should do more of uh, uh, other things also not the usual rice and wheat and maize alone you should do millets you should do fruits you should do vegetables horticulture uh, you should do other other kind of trees and things and also you should do many things so that your income also increases and the production also overall increases for the country so world food program they support the soil and water conservation the building and fixing of irrigation canal dam pond dikes and also the flood barriers through flood assistance program so when they are telling fao is doing something for india when they are telling world food program is doing something for india and so 8.7 million people across 49 countries were benefited in 2021 alone these many people were benefited by these kind of programs okay now we told two things fao and wfp the third one ifad that ifad international fund for agriculture development that is also supporting indian states when it comes to mandrega scheme where our people are working okay so they ensure that micro irrigation infrastructure is environmentally and socially sustainable and financially viable okay meaning it's not simply making some structure it should be financially economically environmentally socially everything should be sustainable and viable so this kind of three un bodies how it is helping india you got excellent like brief points here okay so now again the FAO also supports the sustainable transformation of agri-food system and climate smart agriculture practices to improve the water use efficiency okay so now uh, sorry uh, uh, here again some examples of some states okay uttar pradesh okay uttar pradesh we have the f uh, farmer water school program which helped uh, small holder farmers okay again small farmers uh, to save their time and andhra pradesh farmer managed groundwater system project reached out to 638 habitations in seven drought prone district so again two examples of our two indian states okay this is fao's uh, story then again ifad they have enshrined climate change adaptation in its core strategy so it has set many ambitious target also like leveraging climate financing and then uh, the impact of agriculture you will kind of study and help the farmers to adapt then uh, the weather conditions volatility will inform investing in the restoration and preservation of soil health water resources managing modern technology indigenous knowledge system okay building productive and resilient production system so these are all interesting points that's why i marked in red you have to note it down like seven eight bullet points and then use it in your answer okay now ifad supports projects again in maharashtra orissa uttarakhand nagaland mizoram to incorporate climate resilient seed variety and crops including millets okay 2018 was the year of millets also which india only suggested to the united nations and uh, uh, so train the farmers in climate sensitive agriculture practice soil management so almost every point is same only but the way they have presented they are showing examples of states they are examples of un bodies so the point becomes more valid instead of you simply writing uh, give them training give them millets give them this thing you should write with quoting or relating it to un bodies or taking a name of a state okay that's when your answer looks better now again wfp it is collaborating with the government of oriza to develop solutions for small holder farmers focusing on women that's also a unique point then community based uh, uh, climate advisory service solar technologies manage climate impact promote a millet value chain reduce water usage and improve nutrition okay so this answer you can write with the three un bodies under three paragraphs telling with examples of each state your answer will be fully complete okay then finally some suggestions needed policies what all you should have investment obviously you should have concrete investments and then they are telling innovative and proven technology okay meaning there are a lot of proven technology already like in israel and many countries you can adopt that and increase the productivity adapt to climate change more resilient to shocks environmentally and socially sustainable and financially viable irrigation water management strategy reduce the climate footprint of agriculture production reduce the bio hearts and environmental pollution bring sanitation and drinking water supply okay only then your uh, nutrition factor and uh, hygiene health everything will improve adopt efficient food and water recycling strategies strengthen the institutional arrangement and the capacity for sustainable and equitable water regulation management access and ownership see in this much small area they have written this much points so imagine in your main answer the examiner sees this 
they will instantly give you five six marks for like your extended like suggestions which you have given if it's a 10 marker question and they're asking for suggestions or policies this is exactly what you have to write okay now the un world uh, the food agencies work closely with the government of india on all these things solar re uh, resilience secure fishing uh, revival of millet renewable production energy and uh, food security and nutrition okay so that's a conclusion line or as an opening line also you can write the same now the second article is about that war law okay whether they have violated the law or not so for that again you know the backstory obviously you know Hamas attacked on September sorry October 7 Saturday morning when a music festival was going on these people came and landed there and then just simply killed civilians okay no, like women children men everyone very like they are not even involved in anything they are being killed or they are taken hostages so that itself has violated and Israel has retaliated with all its might and they are now kind of a big war they have already announced it's not like a conflict it's a war itself war means it's like it's gone beyond our uh, control okay. So what are the laws? There are two international laws which in the uh, like uh, Italian kind of term or that uh, Latin kind of term it is called just ad bellum and just in bello. Okay, so these two meaning is what? First is under what conditions or when one country can use the force meaning use military power or use any force. What are the condition? That is the first law which governs the uh, thing. Okay, second is suppose now war is there then what kind of plan you can have military actions there is a limit right like whether you go and put chemical bombs you go and put nuclear bomb or there's so these two are the main governing laws when it comes to uh, war in international arena so now assuming a country is justified that uh, uh, you are that first thing is okay suppose just add bellum that uh, there is a reason for you to use force like in this case there is a reason Israel has to defend themselves or Israel has to release their hostages they have to do that so there is justification but now how okay what is okay but how and how using the force a uh, force is are you doing it correctly because there is reports like it israel is putting chemical bombs israel is also like 600 bombs they are putting in one place so obviously civilians also will uh, die right so that's why uh, the how is wrong here in israel side so that how is also called as ihl or international humanitarian law okay so now the rules that must be followed during armed conflict is all listed under that and this is uh, contained in the customary international law you know we have geneva conventions of war and all i have explained it multiple times in the previous videos and all the so geneva conventions are there where everything they'll tell about how to use what weapons hostages number of army everything is written there in geneva convention additional protocols of geneva is also there of 1977 these are the places where all these things are listed okay and now it regulates the conduct of the parties or the groups engaged in the armed conflict its primary objective is to protect civilians and to reduce the suffering of the war and no matter how just the cause of fighting a war meaning maybe the reason is valid that israel has to fight back but again you should comply with ihl that is the humanitarian law so do the laws of war apply to the ongoing military conflict now what is happening whether this is applying or not so as i told the military is already fighting they are in an armed conflict so obviously this is in war and international criminal tribunal and all many times have suggested many things in that and while there is a resort to armed force between states or protracted armed violence between government authority and organized armed group or between such groups within a state it is it, this laws will apply okay meaning if it's government versus a terrorist group or a, a civil group versus a civil group government versus government anything is there this laws actually apply so international law there is two classifications which they do okay one is international armed conflict iac one is non-international armed conflict niac so international obviously means what two countries are fighting suppose india pakistan is fighting that is iac will govern it NIAC is one side it is non-governmental force like the Hamas here and one side it is the governmental force which is Israel here. So this war comes under NIAC category that is the non-international armed conflict. Okay and again the Geneva Convention there is this article number 3, 4 and all. So article 3 is the one which tells about NIAC and Israel and Palestine are obliged to follow the IHL in this case. Okay because it's written in article number uh, 3. Now what about civilian killings and the hostages we'll see. So civilian killings uh, obviously it should not happen whatever happens whatever armed conflict whichever country is fighting or whichever terrorist group are fighting uh, the you should attack only the combat and the military target you can attack like the maybe the military places like here we had our uh, Uri attack and you know, they attack the military okay but here you are attacking a music festival a civilian that is not uh, allowed okay civilians and civilian objects are not allowed and then indiscriminate attacks that fails to distinguish between them is forbidden and it is illegal okay so Hamas what they did is starting is illegal now Israel doing back is also illegal okay 
because they have been like uh, Palestine, even though it's like a separate area, uh, Israeli forces are placed there. Israeli is constantly monitoring them, walking around with gun. So that also they are kind of, uh, 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 what to say, provoking them. Okay. And now the attack back which Israel is doing, it is disproportionate. Disproportionate means, suppose they uh, killed your 100 civilians. You go and put bomb outside uh, in their place and kill like suppose 1 lakh civilians. So, it's like there is no proportion. You are not even taking revenge. You are like kind of wiping out them completely. Okay, that two civilians who has no role in this. You should if you kill the Hamas terrorist, it's still justifiable. But you are killing the civilians there in the retaliation. So, that is not allowed or that is not legal as per the laws. So, 6000 bombs on Gaza. Obviously, uh, that too without giving them time. Okay, because these people tell like okay, we are uh, going to bomb Gaza and within next uh, half an hour, they go and bomb. In half an hour, how will they escape or in one day also how will they escape because the sea route is blocked the other countries are not accepting them latest today's news was like kuwait country is going to open the borders and allow the uh, Palestinian people to come in if they are interested, if they want to leave there. But I don't think anyone will go because these people, everybody are fighting again, again, telling I want that Jerusalem area, I want that Al Aqsa. They don't want country alone. They want that particular land itself. Okay, it's not like another place you give hundred acres of land. Neither Israelis nor Palestinians will go. They want exactly that land fully. Okay, so that is the issue. So these people again, many deaths are going to happen in both sides because either side is not going to listen to anyone and. Uh, all these are breaches of 1949 Geneva Convention. Okay, so hostage also, hostage is illegal, specifically in Article 8 of the Rome Statute, a treaty which is under the International Criminal Court. There it tells like taking of hostage is a crime. Okay, so I have showed you multiple, multiple laws because simply when in exam you write all this like hostage is illegal, that is not enough. You should have to write like this Article 8 of the Roman Statute of the International Criminal Court. According to that, taking hostage is illegal. So, your answer has more strength, okay, which everybody won't write because in coaching class and all, they won't take this much effort to uh, give you information, the technical details, okay. But in newspapers, these things are there and that is what I am trying to give you free of cost. So, please note it down and write better answers than others, okay. So, now again, as a conclusion, what about the Gaza Strip blockade? Okay, as I told the same thing, Israel is cutting the food, water, supply, electricity, all these things, you want to actually target the terrorist. But when you do this, the civilians are also suffering. They also like need hospitals, they need food, they need water, they need electricity. Okay, education and all, you can't even think at this time, like they are schooling or this thing, even if they are going, that and all is anyway gone. But the other basic needs like food, water, electricity, hospitals, that if you cut down and without giving them time, that is uh, not uh, acceptable. Okay, punishing all the Gaza Strip residents for Hamas's action is illegal and it's a uh, war crime and you have to give them sufficient time. You have to uh, consider the IHL obligations, both sides. Okay, both sides have to consider that and as of now, whatever happened, investigation has to be done uh, for the war crimes committed and uh, internationally, some punishment has to be given to both the, play both the sides. Okay. Now, the last article, very simple article, uh, Claudia uh, Goldin, she won the Economics Nobel Prize 2023. So, she was uh, studying about this gender gap and uh, uh, the, like woman, you know, from uh, manufacture, sorry, agriculture to manufacturing to services when we go, our, uh, it, it, it is not like the woman's uh, jobs thing has gone like exponentially growth. It was actually kind of a, a U shape because in agriculture time, there were a lot of women employed, okay, in the jobs. And then when uh, industry or manufacturing came, in the manufacturing, uh, very less woman was there because it's considered like manual, uh, like heavy labor and all labor work, which women maybe cannot be able to do. So manufacturing time uh, when industrial revolution was going on, women had lesser jobs. And by the time we reached the uh, service sector, now again, uh, because there in IT companies everywhere, even girl, boy, everybody same pay, everything, everything is same. Okay. But still when it comes to promotions or when it comes to hiring and all, some managers will prefer male over female because female problem is after marriage, they will have like after correct six o'clock, they will leave the office and go. They cannot extend late night or maybe they cannot come on a Saturday, Sunday and work. So many things are or maybe uh, this uh, pregnancy, maternity leave like uh, these many weeks, they will not come to office. So many problems are there. So the managers even now they when have an option of male and female candidate, they prefer the male candidate. Okay. So like that these problems this person studied over the years and decades and then made a report and that is why she has given a Nobel Prize. So, uh, earlier it was argued that the missing woman in the labor force is because woman has less education uh, and uh, it is the home issue, inside homes are certain problems that that is the reason they are not able to get. But uh, she is concluding that it is not home issue, it is the market issue, okay, not the home, rather in the market, meaning the companies, in the industries, in the sectors, there, there is the problem, not at the home, okay. So, she got the Nobel Prize and she is countering the one who 1992 got the Nobel Prize. 1992 that person told in the home, they have lesser education, they have more responsibility at home that is why they don't have jobs so she is countering that and this time she has got nobel prize so this 
Now Bale itself is like double standard kind of thing. That time gave award for that, now giving award for this. But still, both are significant for our knowledge purpose. So now, as I told, agriculture economy, from agriculture to manufacturing to services, uh, the factories, everything she studied. And with that, some information she is giving. And uh, she is telling this, even when they entered the workforces uh, and overtook men in educational attainment, and uh, still we see that female jobs are not increasing. Okay, because you can education wise or any achievement wise, woman is getting lot of recognition everywhere. But still, some of the companies pay them less also. Some of the places don't hire them also. So the jobs are not increasing. So due to their inability to take on jobs, Okay, that is an all-consuming responsibility. That's what I told, meaning work on Saturday, Sundays, work extended late night thing or come early in the morning. This and all, like they may not be able to come to office. Okay, well, those who have worked in IT companies will know that. We, I myself have uh, faced that, meaning they will tell that because like you understand she may not be able to come. So you come on a Sunday morning, we got anyway bachelor. So that happens. Managers approach itself to employees are like that. Okay, the everything is given to the male and uh, uh, they want such people who can be used uh, seven days a week. So they there is a term also they hear she will tell a greedy uh, something okay greedy uh, employment or something i will show you so here they are telling those who are extending late night they are attending all the meetings and they are like kind of a pet of the manager and uh, working all the time they get the bonus they get the promotion okay the others uh, like ladies are not able to get it because they have family responsibilities also so now the demands are incompatible with raising children so this mommy track is what everybody believes in even at the cost of a high profile career okay because woman also has to maybe take care of the kids and things and all how much ever men also share the responsibility so woman uh, need not be the ones choosing this slow track gender ideologies often prompt couples to assign women to take one extra family duty okay you would have seen like any uh, if suppose a film actor and film actress also uh, marries you will see like the film actor will continue acting but the actress if it is like married and have a kid and all she may then stop acting or maybe not in movies after that okay because one of them will decide okay one of will, us will go to job and that's always the male which goes to the job the female will be uh, inside so that is there in every sector and that and all she has pointed out in her detailed report. So she is telling this one, greedy work, okay, that is the term which she has used in her uh, report that uh, the greedy work, that is like extraordinary efforts the managers are expecting uh, with uh, so that uh, you will get high salary, high bonus, stock options, fast promotions. So they tell come Sundays and Saturdays, come uh, every day sit till night 11 o'clock. So like that instead of 6 o'clock, like that they will uh, give a lot of things which uh, the woman sometimes cannot do. So we need a restructuring of workplace where uh, which does not rely on this heroic extra overworking efforts and all. And for moderate working and predictable schedules, if you work also, you should be able to you should be able to like getting rewarded. There is a book also, The Overworked American. Okay. So there it is telling it is far more beneficial for companies to hire two workers who worked along uh, worked long hours than three workers who worked for regular hours meaning there are two people here who will work for 24 hours for you and there are three people who will work only nine to six shift the boss will take these two okay because the other things also reduce like your company giving insurance the office space the personal services or advantage you give everything reduces because you're taking only two people and they will do double the work so that is the approach they are telling examples of this bangalore it people and all because you know every uh, it worker okay even i have done when we work uh, at the end of our day we have to have a call uh, with the American counterpart, meaning our teammates will be there also in USA. So we'll have a Zoom call or a meeting where we have to give what all we did today. And then they will take up from there and they will continue because then uh, one day time zone difference is there, right? Like we are working on suppose uh, August 1, there it is still July 31. Okay, they are sleeping, we are working here. And then when we are leaving like night time, uh, that time they will wake up and they will attend call and then take all the inputs and then tell I will continue. Now you go and sleep. So that is how the IT company works. It's a, like a two people are working in one day, but in two different time zones. So you get double the effort, okay, on a single date. So that is how the uh, IT company works usually. And so that they are telling you, those people have worked, they will relate all these things where late night extending and all. So women's employment rate in India is also uh, going down and this should not continue. We have to change something. So the growth of service sector obviously uh, is uh, one good sign as I told the U curve from the manufacturing at least because the service sector when it came, uh, that curve uh, came and so people are increasing in general and uh, uh, rising education that also is giving a woman uh, this thing then uh, advantage and then declining fertility. Now everybody are believing like one child or two child and all. So again, you have more chance or more time to uh, come back to your job and then increased male participation in the household work uh, supporting their wife that is also helping and then uh, uh, child care facilities and all in the office itself you are providing that also helps them come. So that social environment and all which is helping them man maintain the work life balance. If it is set up such work structures where uh, the respect is there for the workers time uh, without emphasizing 
exercising on long work hours, then we can make it come back. Okay, so again, some economist people, uh, John, they have told that longer working hours does not mean always it will be good work because some people will like more injuries can happen in uh, industries because they'll be tired and all or more uh, mistakes can happen because you are like continuously working. So always don't believe that longer working hours means more productivity. So that person's line also you can quote in case of anything. So again, that uh, greedy workers uh, timeline she's telling. Now we have to change everywhere, starting from the schools. Okay, not only workplace, starting from the schools, you have to change this mentality of women uh, and male uh, differences. Uh, both should be treated equally. Uh, supportive institutions should be there. And it will be hard to write the last chapter of the grand gender convergence in labor market outcomes. Uh, uh, this uh, person has educated okay so you have to create lot of institutions only then this conclusion you can come this gap between gender that convergence or bringing them close closing the gap which we discussed uh, two days back closing the gender gap that we can do only when we start from institutions right from school this is the conclusion and this was the detailed article okay so a lot of main points you are getting free of cost so this people don't understand they only watch the video when the thumbnail is like free mains coaching free gs answers when we tell hindu editorial many people take it very lightly but this is literally the free mains coaching and those who are watching or till now if you have watched I guarantee you that this year or next year, it's upon your luck also, you are going to pass because you are doing this effort. Okay, what I am doing the effort to teach you, but you are taking the effort to listen to this, you will succeed in life. Okay, if not, you pay somewhere else because you are getting that much knowledge with these other so-called aspirants who are blindly following coaching model are not getting. Okay, so I hope you get more and more information. Our test series cover almost everything needed for you. Four month and nine month installment will end this week. So please contact me soon and uh, make use of what we are giving you. Okay. Because I want students to get the best knowledge and give the exam the best way. It doesn't matter you pass or fail. You should be giving the best attempt when you give. That is my goal and I will continue teaching this. So thank you and have a nice day.